still getting things figured out here. Uh, the video and audio were not syncing up correctly. I do have a a better camera that I can interface with the computer, which I will be figuring out shortly. The officer's stated force was used to disarm and restrain Hatchet 34 at the time. The following day, King said he had received numerous questions and allegations concerning excessive force, which prompted him to contact SLED and provide all evidence to SLED. And I'm pretty much the last guy that would come out and say, you know, the police are doing something right, but we have to be objective and look at things from all sides. And it seems pretty likely that there is a vested interest in making a lot of people believe that there is a police state right around the corner. And I'm not saying we're not in one in a lot of ways already, but I... I highly question the amount of uh, supposed killings and uh, a lot of the videos that I've seen. Um, I think, it, of course, it would be foolish to believe everything you see. But uh, getting back to the article, here we go. Continuing with the police story, this investigation is still ongoing by SLED. In the release, King also defended the hiring of Shaw and Bell, noting that none of the previous employers for either officer indicated any excessive force issues and nothing was ever reported to South Carolina CJA to raise concerns in our hiring process. In November, Anderson Police Chief Jim Stewart said no one from the Honeypath Police Department had contacted him directly for information on Shaw. Bell has no previous record of disciplinary action or complaints. Shaw joined the Honeypath Police Force in July 2013, about six months after he had resigned from the Anderson Police Department. One day after internal affairs, investigators confronted Shaw about several allegations of misconduct. The state's Criminal Justice Academy, which provides law enforcement officers with training and oversees their certification, maintains records about the officer's work histories. The academy can also revoke an officer's credentials. Shaw began his law enforcement career as a member of the Calhoun Falls Department. In August 2007, he left that position in October 2008 and joined the Iva Police Department in January 2009. This article was written by Abby Hardesty at the Anderson Independent you can find her on Twitter at ABE underscore Hardesty. Once again, I bring this up because it seems contrary to so much of what I see on various, uh, what little national news I see at times and other stories I see through Facebook from across the country and also in other parts of the world. Uh, your comments we are always welcome uh, disagreements or if you have articles that are uh, in support of what I'm saying I, I would welcome that and I would also welcome people who disagree with me and completely say that uh, you know that the police state is real is real um, and I don't have any doubt that it could get to that at some point. But I, from what I've learned about news and history, there's very rarely not some ulterior motive in, in what's, what we perceive is going on. Uh, until next time, good day. Hey, Mr. Jackson. Yes, that's me, Walt Jackson.